Hey and welcome, I'm Laura Lai of Namasturm Yoga. This at-home yoga practice is going to be focused on hamstrings. Let's get started. Come to a seat on your mat just to prep yourself for the practice to come. So maybe just taking a moment with the legs crossed, hands to the knees, take the shoulders back and down, close your eyes for a moment and just Check in with yourself, how you're doing, how you're feeling, how you're breathing. We're going to start really simply today with a, a really nice yin style stretch, meaning we're not going to activate any of our muscles, but we're really just going to let gravity do all of the work for us. Um, so we're going to take the right leg out and we're going to do basically a half butterfly or this is similar to Janya Shirshasana. But in a Janyushasana, I would say activate your quad, flex your foot. But here, we're not going to do that. We're just going to let this leg relax in front of us. Let the left knee drop open. We'll angle our torso towards the leg, but just allow yourself to start to sink down. Don't reach for the foot. Don't really, you know, rush to walk the hands forward. Don't try to push or pull your torso down. If you start to feel like your hands naturally have more space to walk forward, that's fine. But just allow yourself to start to give in to this fold without effort. And we'll spend a few extra breaths here. So yin style is a little bit more um, still and cool. So we can actually practice yin at the, begin um, at the beginning of a practice or, you know, an entire practice can be yin and we don't need to be warmed up for we're really just going to let ourselves sink and give in. And this is not stretching, well it will stretch muscle, but that's not its target. Yin practice targets a lot more of the um, like ligaments and tendons and joints and that connective tissue in our body, stuff that's naturally much more stable. Um, and that's sometimes actually hard to access when our muscles are warm and we're focusing on muscles because those are just a lot more mobile than this other stuff that we're trying to tap into just a little bit here. So we're going to take about five more breaths on this one side. And as you can see, I wasn't really trying to push or pull myself down, but where I started was like way up here. And then just gradually by letting gravity do all the work for me, I've gotten to the point where I could put my head on my leg just naturally, comfortably, and just rest it. And, you know, you may be in a different position, you may not have gotten quite that deep, and that's okay. Or maybe you were, you know, maybe your head was on your shin at the very beginning. Um, but we're just kind of letting the body do its own opening. So we're not going to try to force or push at all, but really just allow. And then walk the hands in and come up. And again, don't engage the leg as you do this. Just let yourself float up and we'll switch to the other side. So tuck the right foot in. Let your right knee drop, and then as that left leg extends out, then just try to relax it. Don't worry if the knee is completely straight or not. Um, the foot might just be flopped a little out to the side, and then turn and angle your torso towards this leg. And so if I were engaging the quadricep and like flexing the foot and engaging basically the muscles of the tops of the legs, it would be easier to specifically target the hamstrings. And we will do that in this practice to get deeper stretches, a deeper stretch into the muscles. But right now, again, we're letting some of the other surrounding tissues open a little bit because if all we're stretching is the muscle, some of those other things can get in the way of deepening our forward folds um, and our like stretches, things like splits and stuff like that. We want to have opening everywhere. Breathe here. Make sure you're breathing. You can also incorporate in your jai breathing practice, narrowing the back of the throat, evening out the rhythm of your breath. And again, I'm not saying you might not feel this in the hamstring, but the goal is to just let everything open without specifically trying to get that real strong stretch sensation in the hamstring. Hamstrings are actually, they're very flexible, but they're also a little vulnerable. So we have the physical strength using our hands to overstretch that muscle. So every time we approach hamstrings, we want to be very careful. We want to anchor 
and engage the, op the, uh, the opposing muscles to stabilize. But we also really want to be very mindful that we're not pushing, forcing, or yanking ourselves deeper. That's not to say we won't experience any sensation in that muscle, but we don't want it to get to the point of pain. Um, and sometimes that distinction is very difficult, I find, in the hamstrings to determine. So you'll just kind of have to listen to your body a little bit, but go slow, go easy. Don't force your hamstring if it's not ready to go. Take about two more breaths here on this side. And you might also notice if one side felt different from the other, that's very normal. And then come on up. And we're just gonna come to hands and knees. So moving to a tabletop position, um, at this point, we do want to start to get the body warmed up a little bit. So coming to a few cat-cow stretches, head and tail lift, chest and belly drop. Exhale to cat pose. Inhale to cow pose. Let your shoulder blades drop. So even though our focus for the practice is hamstrings, you know, we never want to just work one body part because our body is all connected. So being warm in one area is going to help us to work in another area. And you know, we don't want to do a practice that just neglects every part of the body but one. Um, so although this may be the focus in any practice, there always should be a little, at least some sense of balancing it out with other parts of the body. Let's just continue to add on here. So really simple. The next time you go to cat, drop your hips to the heels, easy child's pose, inhale back up to cow, and then let's go to our first down dog. And we're just gonna hold for a moment and then take the knees back to the floor, back to a cow pose. And then exhale, child's pose. One more time, inhale to your cow. Keep the chest back and the shoulders kind of drawn onto the upper back as you move to down dog and let's hold. So down dog is a great place to stretch the hamstrings a little bit because we can really work the upper body even with the knees bent which means that we can take the legs one at a time and control the stretch without feeling like we have to go really deep to maintain this pose. Keeping the hands rooting down and the hips high, heart back, neck released, keep the left knee bent and just gently start to straighten the right leg and drop the right heel to the floor. As opposed to just bopping back and forth here between the heels, Take a breath or two on the one side, give that leg a chance to actually open and stretch, and then re-bend the right knee and straighten the left leg. Drop that heel gently towards the floor. Don't force or push deeper than your body's ready to go. Remember, this is still early in the practice. Muscles are not real warm. We need them warm to be able to stretch them deeply. And then let's move forward to plank, shoulders over wrists, adjust the hands or feet if needed to make the pose a little longer so you've got it. Reach the head forward away from the heels, strong through your core. And then let's take the knees to the floor, lower the chest between the hands. And then take the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. So we're gonna do a little back bend here, stretch the shoulders as well. Maybe take the feet up off the floor, point the toes behind and breathe, gazing forward lightly. Let yourself down, forehead to the ground. And then let's just move into a simple cobra, elbows by the sides, hands under shoulders, push down to roll up a little bit. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. If you wanna keep this easier, you could take the weight out of your hands and just come to a baby cobra. And then from here, back to down dog. So tuck your toes, lift your knees and hips. Root through the hands, lift the hips, lift the heels of both feet and take the right leg into the air. Swing it up and stretch through the toes. See if you can get your right hip to stack on top of your left as you reach the foot to the ceiling. But at the same time, the shoulders stay level. So we're just opening the hips, but keeping the upper body strong and stable. Look to the front of the mat. Step your right foot up between your hands. Take the left knee down and extend the toes. And we're gonna come on up for a low lunge here. So we're gonna sink the hips forward toward the front heel. We're opening a little bit into the right hip and obviously stretching the knee here, but we're also stretching that back quad. So the more we can sink the hips forward toward the front heel, the more we'll get with that. Take the arms up. If you want, hands behind the head, pull your elbows wide. You can 
cradle your head in your hands or just lean the head back. So there's a little back bend happening here, but we're also thinking about stretching the front of the back leg. As we get into certain poses where we want to stretch the one hamstring, the opposite quad also needs to stretch simultaneously. So we can connect all of the stretches of the legs that are going to support us in the poses that require deep, that are asking for deep hamstring stretches. Take your right knee back to meet your left, lower the chest down, take a cobra pose. And then moving to down dog, we'll do the other leg. So sweep that left leg up, reach the toes, root through the hands. Get really nice and high with the foot. So try to stretch up and you can lift your right heel as well. Move the heart back, keep your neck relaxed. And then look forward between the hands and step that left foot up between them. Take your right knee down, extend those toes and float on up for the low lunge on the second side. Make sure you're breathing here. You can do the same thing with the head and the hands, or if you want, you could interlace the fingers, point that first set of finger, the first fingers up, lift the heart, maybe a little lean back. If you can, press into the top of the back foot so that your knee isn't taking very much weight in back. And then hands to the floor, and let's step forward. So tuck your back toes and step the back foot forward. And we're in our first full forward fold. Start this one off really easy with the upper body just dangling and the knees very soft. So really here, we're not so much thinking about stretching hamstrings as we're thinking about letting the upper body go. Loosening up the back of the neck, maybe sway from side to side. And then if you can, plant your fingers on the floor and keep your left knee bent, but see if you can just straighten the right one a little bit. So similar to what we did in down dog. We're just gonna work one leg at a time, really controlling it so we're not forcing. And then bend the right knee and straighten the left leg a little bit. The hips will shift a little, just because obviously when one leg is straight and the other knee is bent, that's causing the hips to one be higher than the other. We'll be a little bit back and forth here again. Bop through it if that feels good. And then walk the feet together, big toes touch, heels slightly apart. Let's bend the knees a lot more and roll up to stand. Reach the arms out and up. Palms together in front of the heart. Let's do a good sun salutation here. Inhale. Exhale, long forward fold over the legs. Inhale, take a half lift, flat back. Legs are strong here, so engage your quads to help open those hamstrings behind you. And then stepping all the way to plank, you can lower with knees to the floor or maybe take Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Cobra, or if you're ready, you can sweep to Up Dog. And then exhale, Downward Facing Dog, and hold for a few breaths. Now, root into the hands, lift the hips, relax the neck. As you inhale, you can lengthen the pose in the upper body. As you exhale, you're gonna melt your heart back toward the legs, but this may be also where you straighten the legs a little or drop the heels, if you can do that without shoving your shoulders forward. Exhaling. Go deeper into whatever stretch you can find here. Don't force. One more breath. And then inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees to step or lightly hop to the front of the mat. Inhale for a half lift. Exhale, fold down deep. And maybe take an extra breath here. If you want, bring the hands behind the quads and pull yourself down, head toward the legs. Knees do not need to be completely straight, but we're working more in that direction. And then root down to rise up, flat back. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. Let's just take another vinyasa to get back to down dog. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, high to low plank. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's take the right leg into the air, but this time keep the hip nice and square. So you feel like there's an extension from hands to hip to heel and you're creating a diagonal line. The, the thigh is facing the floor, the toes are flexed straight down. Look to the front of the mat and step the foot all the way between the hands. Knee over ankle, let's float to a high lunge. This is crescent pose. 
So the focus on crescent pose is that, you know, it's a lunge. We're bending into the front knee. We want the knee above the ankle. We're trying to get the thigh parallel to the floor. But don't forget about the back leg because if we can reach through the back heel and extend the back leg, we can also really stretch and stabilize that back leg as well. Hips are squared forward. Take the arms up. Energy through the fingers, softness through the shoulders. Gaze forward to keep your balance nice and steady. And then let's take the left hand to the floor inside the right foot. Just a nice, easy twist here. Open the shoulders, stack them, look up toward the top thumb. Maybe lean the head back a little bit. And then turn back to the floor, step back to plank, and then take your vinyasa. You can skip any of these vinyasas if you don't want to do them. Just go straight to down dog. Focus on what makes sense for you today. Let's take the left leg up. Root through the hands, reach through the heel. Try to keep your hips level. This is, just, this is the sort of the classic down dog split. The one we did earlier was a nice stretchy variation. And then look forward, step your left foot up. Knee over ankle, reach through that back leg. So if this back leg is really stabilizing, you have your quad engaged, that underside of the knee lifts up as you float up, continue to lunge into the front leg and reach the arms up. Energy through the fingers, shoulders nice and soft. So we really just want to get our legs warmed up. Stabilize, use your breath and your gaze. And then taking the right hand down. Make sure your fingers and toes line up and your shoulder ends up over your wrist and then take the left arm up. Left knee should stay right on top of your ankle. Breathe. And turning to the floor. Once again, take your vinyasa if you like to. I actually really like the vinyasas as a part of any practice. They keep your body warm and you know, they can feel familiar, that smooth flow from pose to pose with the breath. But if you don't like them, obviously this is your practice. So choose what works for you. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. As you exhale, bend the knees to step or lightly hop the feet forward. Inhale, take a half lift, exhale, Fold down deep and let's go ahead and with the first two fingers of each hand, grab onto the big toes and we're going to take Padangustasana, um, which is basically a uh, hand to toe <laughs> uh, pose. Let's lift halfway. So as you're reaching the head away from the tailbone, think of Ardha Uttanasana, that half forward fold we do with the flat back. Pull up on the toes and then to deepen this as a forward fold, we're going to bend the elbows out to the sides and draw our chest down towards the legs. Keep space between the shoulders and ears. And then finally, if you can, lean a little more toward the balls of the feet so you're not all on your heels. Head hangs down. Breathe. Pull up on the big toes. Keep the shoulders lifted. Draw yourself closer, but again, listen to your, your hamstrings here. Don't hurt them. Make sure your quads are staying engaged. And then we're going to release that, and we're going to float on up all the way. Strong feet into the floor, rise up, palms together in front of the heart. Let's take another vinyasa. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. You can jump to Chaturanga if you like, or you can step back and lower, or as I said, you could skip that. Exhale, down dog. Let's just take the right leg into the air. One inhale, take it up. Exhale, step it to the front of the mat. We're gonna set up for warrior one. So the back heel is gonna pivot down. Left toes turn out, get that heel down, come on up. Reach the arms, lunge deep. Root into the outer edge of the back foot. And we're going to do a little bit of adding on here. So as you inhale, straighten up the front leg. As you exhale, sweep down over it. When you get to the bottom, bend the knee. Inhale, come back up to warrior one. And we're just going to flow here. Straighten the leg. Exhale, fold. Bending the knee at the bottom of the exhale. Inhale, rise up. Straightening the leg at the top of the inhale. Exhale, fold deep. Bend the knee. 
Inhale, rise and straighten the leg. Now we're gonna fold one last time over the leg and then we're gonna step the back foot so that the back heel lines up with the front arch. We're gonna move to triangle pose. So I'm gonna have my back to you, but this is a real basic standing pose, but we wanna keep that front leg straight. Knee is not locked, this quad is engaged. See if you can just maybe even take your left fingers to the floor outside, not by the toes, but by the shin. And then just like you're opening a door, tuck your right hip in, open the left hip, open the shoulders, root down through the feet, lengthen the sides of the body. This bottom hand should be really light, so now we should be able to float on up, stretch back, and then cartwheel the hands around the front foot, and you'll need to bend your knee to get those hands down, step to plank, take a vinyasa, and we'll do the second side. So inhale, take that left leg up, exhale, step it forward between the hands, and starting with warrior one, so root your back heel down, and in warrior one, because we want the hips squared forward, the left foot should be slightly to the left of the mat and the right foot slightly to the right of the mat. The back heels down, square the hips, shoulders over hips, and then straighten the front leg as you inhale. And then as you exhale, just drape yourself out over it, bend the knee at the bottom, inhale, rise up, straighten the leg, exhale, fold, and bend the knee. Rooting through the outer edge of the back foot the whole time as you flow here. Follow the breath. Rise and straighten. And one more time, exhale, fold. And then holding down with that front leg nice and straight. Now, this is why we want to adjust the feet because we're gonna open. We want that back arch now to line up with the front heel. Plant your left fingertips. Keep this torso long. Keep this front leg nice and straight and strong and then just open. Root through the back heel. Try to get that left hip tucked underneath you and the sides of the body long. Turn your head, look up toward the top thumb. And then press the feet down really strongly so you can just float up, stretch it back, and then cartwheel the hands around to the floor. Vinyasa. Up dog or cobra, and exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, bend the knees to step or lightly hop the feet forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Okay, so now we grabbed the big toes last time for Panangustasana. Now we're just going to hang on to the left big toe. I'm going to turn to the side, and we're going to slowly see if we can come up holding onto the toe. Take your right hand to your hip and see if you can. Just float that leg up with you. Root down through your standing foot. Push your left heel forward. Try to draw your left shoulder back. So you're pulling that leg up towards you, but you're keeping your hips level. Steady your gaze on one point so you don't fall. You can take that right arm out, and then if you want, take that leg out to the side. Breathe. Now I've turned to an angle on my mat, but I'm gonna to try to turn back to the front of my mat. Whoop. We're gonna take the leg, so the leg's out to the side. We're gonna take it back through center. We're gonna carefully let that leg go. Reach the arms up, let's go to standing splits. So we're gonna let that leg swing underneath us. And as we do that, we're like going through warrior three. Let the fingers come to the floor. Fold into the right leg, lift the left leg high. Now, if balance is okay here, and we've been balancing on this right foot, we're gonna take the right hand to the right ankle or heel. And this is gonna challenge the balance, but the goal of the hand is actually to be able to draw our torso deeper towards the leg and lift the left leg higher. Fold in, let the head hang down. And then bend the front knee, step back long. Sorry, I've gotta use the whole mat here. Inhale, take warrior one. 
Exhale, open to warrior two, and we'll just take a couple breaths in warrior two, just to get some of our good basic standing poses in here. Look out over those front fingers. Again, we want to keep the balance going, and our warrior poses really work the hips, and you know it's all connected to our legs, so we want to do this as well. Turn that front palm up, reverse warrior, and then cartwheel the hands to the floor. Move through vinyasa to get back to down dog. And breathe. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, bend the knees to step or lightly hop the feet forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. And now we're going to do the same thing we did on the left leg with the right leg. So we're standing on the left leg this time. Grab hold of your right big toe. Um, if it's not possible for you to come up like this, you could bend the knee as you come on up, or you could just find another way to get that leg extended out in front of you. But give this one a try. See how it works. You're pushing the foot forward into the hand. Try to also draw your right shoulder back a little. Gaze up and forward. And then taking the leg to the side, avoid hiking your right hip up. So just notice if you tend to kind of drop your weight into your left hip and lift your right hip to try to get the foot higher. We want the hips to stay level here. And then coming back to center, and remember, we're going to try to float to a standing split. So carefully let go of your foot, take the arms up, and then flowing through warrior three. So we kind of hit that here at this moment, and then we continue to let the hands come down and the right leg go up, fold into the left. I have students ask me sometimes in standing splits, should the hips be open or should the hips be square? And honestly, you can work either way, whichever feels like it's giving you a better practice. So if you struggle to keep the hips square, maybe work them square. But if it feels really good to take them open, take them open here. Use your left hand to pull against that left ankle or heel. Draw yourself deeper if you can. And then bend the front knee, step back long. And again, we're just going to take our standing poses briefly. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale to warrior two. And hold for a few breaths. Hips level, shoulders over hips. So make your alignment adjustments. Look out over those front fingertips. Strong back leg. Turn the front palm up, reverse the warrior, and hands to the floor, moving through vinyasa. Get yourself back to down dog. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale to bend the knees to step or lightly hop the feet forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold, and now let's take Pada Hastasana. Um, so this can be done with the feet about hip distance apart. Bend your knees and one at a time, slide your hands underneath your feet until the toes come to the wrists. And this is nice because we can then wiggle the toes into the wrists to give them a bit of relief. Switch to the other foot. Try not to do this both feet at the same time because it's just hard to balance. Now, let your head hang. Wiggle the toes into the wrists, yes. Lift your shoulders and maybe, if the hamstrings are feeling okay, start to straighten the backs of the legs. So this is obviously, we use this a lot as a nice wrist releaser, but it is in its essence a forward fold and we can develop it into a hamstring stretch. Again, remember, you could overstretch your hamstrings if you pushed too hard. So make it easy. Find your edge and just stay like a notch behind your edge. Maybe lean a little forward toward the balls of the feet. Wiggling the toes if you can, if that feels good. And then take the hands out from under the feet. Let's just roll up to standing here. Come on up nice and strong. Shoulders back and down. And let's take the feet nice and wide. And we're gonna set up for Prasarita Padottanasana. So parallel the outer edges of the feet with the outer edges of the mat. And this is a nice wide-legged forward fold. It will get into the legs, um, but you know, it's a little different than doing a straight up hamstring stretch with the feet together. Take your hands to your waist, 
fold. Start with a flat back, nice long spine. But once you get halfway, your hands can come to the floor. You can let the head hang and let the upper body kind of give in. Lean forward toward the balls of the feet. Lift the quads. So we're, we're, doing, we're working a few things. So we're working the active fronts of the legs. And you might even think of wrapping the fronts of your thighs in and back to open the legs behind you. We're leaning forward toward the balls of the feet. We're letting the head, the weight of the head hang down. And then we're letting, allowing, giving permission for those, the legs and the hamstrings and the sit bones to open behind us. Lean in, lift the quads, keep working in that way. Stay breathing. And then press the feet into the floor, take the hands to the hips and float up slowly. All right, let's go ahead and turn the right toes forward. And we're gonna step the left foot in a little bit. And we're gonna set up for pyramid here, which is a nice hamstring stretch. We're working on the right leg. Um, so we're gonna take the hands behind the back. Uh, well, we'll start with them on the hips actually. So let's start with them on the hips. We want to have the hips level, so that means usually we need to step the left foot a little to the left and a little forward. We don't want it here, that's too close, but if we were to take it back as far as a lunge, it's sometimes really hard to keep that heel down and keep it from pulling this left hip back. So have the feet a little closer, and then as you start to fold, take yourself about halfway down and just get a nice flat back here. Reach the head away from the tail. Right leg. If you feel like your kneecap has pressed back and you've locked your knee, see if you can find just a teeny micro bend. Think more of working with your quad and pulling your right leg deeper into the hip socket here. And then you can fold deeper. Try not to shift the hips though. Allow yourself to fold in, engage the front of the leg. If you're not sure what's going on with the hips, take your hand onto your tailbone and see if there's any little adjustments that you need to make with your positioning to help you really get in there. And then finally, if you want to, if you want to come up and take a reverse namaste, you could bring your palms together behind the back to add to your pyramid if you want to work the arms a little bit here. And then since we're in pyramid, we can move in the direction of a revolved triangle. So from here, we're going to come back to that flat back position where we reach the head away from the tail. You could use a block under your left hand here, plant the left hand, or it could just be fingertips, and then the right hand is going to go up and twist. Attempt to keep your hips level, but it's not perfect. We will get a little bit more of a stretch for the outer leg here, which is nice because it, you know, balances the other parts of the leg we're really stretching today. Reach the head away from the tail, and then fold down. Step to plank, and if you want to take a vinyasa here, go ahead and do it. We'll do the other side in a moment. And breathe. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, bend the knees and step or lightly hop those feet. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold down deep. Press the feet, reverse the swan dive, flow down up. And then let's go ahead and step to another wide stance here. And let's, this time, let's turn the toes out. We're just going to take a little variation here. Palms together. Just bend the knees directly toward the toes. So the knees are going to go a little wide. Sit bones straight down to the ground. Again, we're getting into our hips. Hips are connected, so we want to make sure we're getting all parts of the leg. Our really, our goal here, kind of our pinnacle pose, is going to be Hanumanasana, which is the full split. So we're just really trying to think about our hips as well as just the hamstrings, quads, everything is involved in that pose. Press down through the feet, straighten the legs, come back to standing, and let's go ahead and take pyramid on the other side. So we're pivoting the left toes. Take the right foot a little to the right and the toes a little open, but the feet are still about hip distance apart, so they're not lined up back to front. Hands to the hips and start by just folding about halfway. Check in with this front leg. Knee not straight, but not locked. Try to activate the quad or think about pulling your leg deeper into your hip socket if you can. 
See if you can keep the hips pretty level. And then you can take that reverse namaste if you want to. If that's too hard on your shoulders or your wrists or whatever, you can skip it and then fold down. That one's actually a hard one for me on my wrist. And if you prefer, you can have your hands on the floor to support and protect you, especially if, you, if you're worried about going too deep and you can't, you know, we want to be in control of this, the stretch as well. And then we're going to revolve our triangle. So float up halfway, take the right fingers to the floor and you want to have your fingers and toes lined up. So don't put the hand ahead of your foot or your back heel is going to want to float up or else your hips are going to get skewed. And then, you know, check in with your hips, attempt to get them relatively level and then twist your torso, take the left arm up and you should feel a bit of a stretch along the outer left leg here. So that should feel nice. Keep reaching the head forward away from the tail and rooting down through your back heel. And then turn to the floor, palms plant. Let's step to plank and take a vinyasa. And breathe. If you need to pedal out the legs or anything here, go ahead and do that. Let's take the right leg into the air on an inhale. Exhale, step it to the front of the mat. And we're going to take the left knee down. And now we're going to set up for first Ardha Hanumanasana. So we're going to move the hips back over the left knee and flex and pop onto the right heel. Now, some of you might want to use a block here or whatever you've got that can support your hands as a prop. Um, I'm going to try to work without one, but I will tell you the points at which you might want to use one. So one might be right here. If it's hard for you to even fold enough that you can get your hands on the floor, use a block under your hands, bring the floor up to you. Now we want to try to keep the hips pretty square and the same as in pyramid, we're thinking of not locking this knee so much, but pulling the, the quad up and driving the right leg deeper into the socket. And then you can fold, right? So this is just a forward fold. If you want to go to full Hanumanasana, you would start to slide your heel forward. And sometimes it's hard to slide it on your sticky mat. You can put something under it. Or for me, once I get it off the mat onto the floor, it becomes a lot easier. Now, if you wanted to, if you got to a certain point, but you know you're not going to get your quad down, your thigh down, you can put a block under that to support it. And that can feel really nice. Once you start to get into it, remember, we're still trying to square the hips. So right hip draws back, left hip forward. This is a stretch not only for the front hamstring, but for the back quad as well. If you get to the point where you can actually rest your hamstring on the ground, then you have the opportunity to take the arms up, square yourself forward, and some of you might even enjoy folding over the front leg. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go this deep on the second side. It depends, but we did warm up well. So this might be, you know, your body might be ready for it. Don't hurt it if it's not. Really try to listen to it. And then if you're folded, carefully come on up. And we're going to try to come out of this pose carefully. Um, I know for me, my heel always gets caught on my mat, so do the best you can. Sweep the leg around if you want to. Come back to down dog and shake out the right leg or kick through the heel here. And we'll do the second side. Take the leg into the air on an inhale, and then exhale, step it to the front of the mat. Take your right knee down, move your left hip back or right hip over the knee. So this back quad is really vertical right now as we work Arda. And then we want to pop up onto our front heel so that this left leg can be really straight and that if we were to come up, our hips are right over our back knee and the front leg is straight. Pull the quad back, try to drive the leg deeper into the hip socket. So we're thinking of squaring the hips, which is trying to move the hips in the opposite direction of the way the legs are going. Fold out over the front leg. Again, remember the quad is active, the hamstring we're trying to let, let go and relax. 
and maybe stay here and look, maybe the second side is different than the first side. So honor what's going on. If you need to have your hands on a block, have them on a block. If you want to start to slide that heel forward, start to do it. We don't want to rock to our left hip. So we want to stay on the top of our right quad. And again, if you want to support your hamstring with a block underneath, that can feel really nice sometimes. Once that hamstring is able to rest, even if it is on a block, it all of a sudden becomes a lot easier to kind of just soften and let go into this pose. For me, this side is a little tighter today, so I'm going to try to be a little careful. Hanumanasana is named after the, you know, the um, god Hanuman, who was known, he's the, if you've ever seen any of the Hindu gods, he's the one that's kind of got the monkey head, and he was known to need to leap over the sea in a, t in a, a single step. So that's why you would have to spread your legs so far. Maybe take the arms up, and again, if you want to, take a fold down over your leg. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Breathe wherever you're at. And then find your way on out when you're ready. And if you want to stay a little longer here, if this feels good, feel free. This is your practice, so make it work for you. Come on back and maybe shake that left leg out or kick through the heel. Okay, let's come forward to plank and lower down to the floor. Normally we do forward folds to counter back bends, but we've been doing a lot of hamstring stretching, so we're going to actually counter with a back bend. Although we will finish with one final forward fold. Let's go ahead and bend the knees, reach back for the tops of the feet, pull the heels away from the hips. You can root down through the thighs, but if you want, you can take them up a little higher. And this might actually feel okay here because we have also stretched our quads. So you might find you've got a little more lift available to you. And then slowly let yourself come down to the ground, forehead or an ear to the floor. And then hands next to chest. Let's press back to child's pose. Ah, we're definitely winding down at this point. Coming up, let's drop to the left hip. And before we do our final forward fold, we're gonna do a nice seated twist. So with the left hip on the floor, cross that right leg over, and then get your right hip back on the floor as well. So the left foot's under, right is over. We're gonna to twist to the right. Use your left arm, either around or past your knee. Turning over your right shoulder. As you drive your right shoulder back, think of moving your right hip forward so you really get that nice ringing action in the torso. And let's switch to the other side. So recross the legs and either wrap or use your left arm and same thing. So as the left shoulder moves back, the right hip we want to move that, or the left hip we want to move it forward. Um, if we just let the left hip go back, then we're more shifting than really twisting, ringing, stimulating those internal organs. And then go ahead and come out of the twist. And we're just going to take a very simple Paschimottanasana. So taking the legs out, both of them, flex the feet, shoulders back, starting with Dandasana, staff pose. So at the very beginning of class when we stretched, we kept the feet relaxed. We didn't worry about our knees. We didn't engage the quads. But here we're going to really actively tone the tops of the legs. And this is what we do from staff pose here. And then we can take the arms out and up. But as we let the upper body go, really just try to let it give in. If the hands naturally reach the feet, great. You can gently nudge the pinky toe side of the ball of the foot back towards you. But don't try to yank, pull, or force yourself deeper. We want to allow the upper body to be at ease. Forward folds, in addition to stretching our hamstrings, are designed to calm us. So this is the point where you can start to close your eyes, perhaps. 
Really tune back into the breath and just give into gravity. Notice this pose evolve over the next few breaths. And then when you're ready, come up slow. And especially if this felt like a deep stretch for you, don't, you know, just pop out of it. Really take your time releasing out of it. And let's take the legs to a cross-legged position. And we'll finish here. Um, I encourage you to give yourself another few minutes to come to the floor, to your back, to corpse pose, and take a good shavasana to really complete the practice. But I'll close with you from here. So let's bring palms together in front of the heart. Close the eyes. Tune back into the breath. The light in me recognizes and honors the light in you wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me today and sharing a practice from home. Namaste. Thank you again. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Hope to see you again next time. Take care.